So in the review for chapter five and six, the first one says, what is independence? The idea for independence is that knowing one doesn't change the probability of another. So another way to put it is the probability of A given B is the same as the probability of A because a didn't care about B. A was independent for B. Just because I said B happened doesn't change A's likelihood of happening. On 75, it says we're going to flip a coin three times. What's the sample space for each flip? So each flip is either heads or tails. Now the next one says we're going to flip it three times and see how many heads and tails I get. What's the sample space? Uh, depends how you look at this exactly. Some people may say how many which could be 0, 1, 2, and 3, which I think is what they want because the next one says we're going to note what we get on each flip. What's the sample space? Heads, heads, heads. Heads, heads, tails. Heads, tails, heads. Tails, heads, heads. Heads, tails, tails. Tails, heads, tails. Tails, tails, heads. And tails, tails, tails. There would be eight things in that sample space because two times two times two is eight. And to do a tree diagram for it, it's basically the first one is a heads or a tails, and then the next one's a heads or a tails, and then the next one's a heads or a tails. And you can see there'd be eight things on that tree diagram. So the next one says there are three ways to get from Fremont to Grand Rapids and four ways from Grand Rapids to the house. How many different ways can I drive from Fremont to my home through Grand Rapids? With a tree diagram, it would look like three ways on the first part and four for each of those ways, giving me a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 different ways, which of course is the three ways for the first leg of the trip and four ways for the second leg of the trip. So this kind of leads into how many different four-digit numbers can you make? Well, we got four-digit numbers. There are ten digits if we allow it to start with a zero. So there's ten different possibilities here, ten different here, ten different here, ten different here. That's ten thousand different numbers. 81 says, what if I want to do the same thing, but I don't want to allow repeats? So there's 10 choices for the first number. The second number can be any of the nine remaining numbers, and then eight, and then seven, because I can't repeat any digits. So that's 720 times seven, that's 5,040. What event is a probability? Sorry, what is an event in probability? It's anything that could happen. So if we were talking about the events of getting, uh, you know, what your letter grade was in a course, we could talk about the event of making an A. We could talk about the event of making an A or a B, like if you were going to make the honor roll. We could talk about the event of making an A, B, or C, which is like passing. We could talk about the event of failing, which is just an F. So any specific thing or subset of the sample space. So back when we talked about flipping a coin, we could talk about the event of getting two heads, which would be any of these cases could be an event, or it could be one of those individually, just any of the subset of that sample space. The probability is any number between zero and one inclusive, and when I add everything together, for the individual disjoint outcomes, we have to get one. The sample space, therefore, has a probability of one. And now it says, what are complements drawn of Venn diagram and what are disjoint? So complement is sort of like this. The shaded region is a complement. So we could talk about in the circle might be all the football players. Out of the circle is everybody who's not a football player. And then 87 says give disjoint events. So disjoint events look like this. They're not connected at all. There's no overlap region. And we said the circle on the left might represent uh, football players and the circle on the right could represent um, people in the drill team. So there's no overlap between those two groups. They are disjoint, which is also known as mutually exclusive.
this chart for the next three questions says what's the probability it's blue so I got to figure out that so I'm going to add these up three four five six seven eight nine this is going to be ten percent what's the probability that an M&M is not red or green so I don't want red or green so it's everything that's left which is either 30 plus 20 plus 10 plus 10 or 100 minus those two and then the next one is a little bit uh, tricky perhaps it says what's the probability that an M&M is yellow and orange I've only got one M&M it can't be two colors there's a 0% chance that that M&M is yellow and orange all right the next one says Bree beats Erica 9% of the time in tennis but Erica is faster 8% of the time in swimming what's the probability Bree wins both matches so assuming the matches are independent assuming they're independent there's a 9% chance that Bree wins this and there's a 92% chance that Bree wins the swimming match and so multiplying those two things together I get 0.0828 now we have to assume they're independent and I don't know if they're independent or not um, so I don't know it's probably not valid because independence is a hard thing to get